Good morning everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Today we'll talk about the DCR flash systems and actually the hazard coming from the DC systems. And that was the plan for today webinars. So instead of this I'm doing recording because we have some audio issues. Let me jump into it. So my name is Marcin Nota if you don't know me. Uh, I'm the electrical engineer uh, doing all the power system studies and uh, Aqua risk assessments. I'm running uh, MR power systems uh, and uh, and we hit over 12,000 followers on LinkedIn. So uh, I'm really appreciated and thank you very much for doing this. So a few words about the yeah, webinar or recording now. So we'll not have a, a Q&A session. We can ask questions uh, later. Once I'm finished, once I'm done. Uh, feel free to ask questions uh, and write it on LinkedIn, write it on uh, YouTube. I will try to answer all of them. Or you can also uh, contact me directly. Uh, because we are not live now, I, I will upload it on YouTube and I will upload it. Uh, uh, and uh, link to the YouTube recording I will upload on LinkedIn. Uh, so And for today, I, I, I would like to uh, take time and uh, talk about DC versus AC R class. So just to show you a brief, uh, maybe not difference, but why we look at the DC, why this is a problem. <clears throat> Give you some examples from the project I had, or at least I pick up one of the projects and part of it. And, uh, and then Q&A will be remotely, so feel free to ask all the questions. So if we go with the DC versus AC, uh, probably you know Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, uh, let's see, grandfathers of uh, AC and DC systems. Um, they didn't invent it, let's say, but um, they were the most uh, recognized people who were advocating each system. And uh, now we are back to the DC systems again. So if you look at uh, what's happening now, we have a lot of renewable energy coming in and we also look on the battery storage systems. So this is coming back. And just to give you an example of what's the, between AC and DC. So for, if you look on the AC systems, uh, we talk about the, all the power conventional power plants, coal plants, nuclear. They are all uh, AC generators at the end. Huge generators, but AC. So the so the energy uh, of voltage is changing 50 times or 60 times uh, per second. The same is for the older uh, AC uh, diesel generator types or gas generator types which are like the backup emergency generators or wind turbines this is the same topic they might operate on the different uh, frequency level but uh, so they need some converters but generally it is the same and all the like wind, like wind uh, inverters AC AC systems uh, if you ask where we use it so of course we use it in the homes and commercial mm, that's uh, mm, Partly true because a lot of things we use are actually DC, uh, but in industrial, all the motors, they, they are mostly AC machines. Uh, all the transmission lines, they are AC, uh, what we see low or medium or high voltage systems. Most of the lights, they used to be AC. And we also have the UPS system, all the and distribution system is AC, all the electrical panels, at least for this moment. If we talk about the DC systems, so if you look at uh, what's happening now, we, we went into the, the renewable uh, uh, industry. So all the PV plants, they are all DC source. So they basically create DC power. Uh, all the batteries for the energy storage used, all the cells, they are all DC power. Uh, we might have a DC generators and motors. So for example, for Tokamak in Japan, uh, they created 51.3 megawatt uh, DC field generator. It is used for the for the uh, system, but I didn't find a photo for it, unfortunately. It's from Mitsubishi. And if you, for example, create the cars that we have the battery uh, with the AC alternator, because it's AC alternator with the bridge, which is creating, uh, let's say. Uh, quasi DC voltage for us and but the, what, what is changed now it's how we use the DC power in past there was no DC really for the domestic but now it's happening so there there was a test uh, 
um, houses or households where in Netherlands, for example, when they test DC supply, so you don't have an AC 230, or, but you have a DC system for the supply, which is one of the new things. All the uh, in industrial DC machines, because we also have a DC motors, and they are used. Uh, LED electronics, this is all DC. For the transmission lines, you probably are aware that we have high voltage DC transmission lines. So they have a multiple advantage of us as well. And all the UPS, or so the DC part which, with the battery uh, that is used. And our oh, heating elements, but they are, let's say, resistant, so they can be AC, DC, and so on. The best example, just to show you uh, what this is, I think uh, I found this uh, experiments Robert 33. Uh, so he wrote, he recorded very well uh, what we talk about when we talk about the difference between AC and DC from protection perspective. So the biggest issue in the past was switching, because AC is changing uh, multiple times, 50 times, 60 times per second. We have a chance when it's crossing zero to switch off, and the same will be for the arc. At some point, it might be, uh, let's say, disconnected. And you see, it is working. This video is perfect, to be honest. I, I'm really happy, all the credits for the channel. Mm. And you see, it's easy to disconnect and connect, at least at this voltage level. Yeah, all works well. So you don't see any big sparks, gaps, and so on. This would be, let's say, if you switch to DC system, uh, and this is probably very often you can see in uh, PV plants when people are playing with the cables, you start to see arc like this. So that's why DC systems are, um, let's say, much worse for us from arc and fire protection point of view. And they are becoming more popular now popular or are they getting into the system so it is generally higher fire risk I would say and we of course have a different uh, switching uh, DC switches DC breakers to handle it but you, you might see the difference it's the same voltage level and it's very different behavior so we also look on the uh, DC from our perspective from the personal uh, safety point of view and if you ask why it is a problem this video wasn't a hint, but uh, it is starting because we it is getting common use. So probably you are very uh, familiar that okay, PV plants, all the photovoltaic systems, they are getting much much bigger. I think not sure, but I think the biggest one is getting 100 megawatts generally, like six, seven, ten megawatts is nothing special anymore. Uh, all the electric cars. Uh, that we are getting now with all the battery uh, supply. Mm. That's the same problem. Uh, all the battery storage system for the PV or wind, we tried to talk about it, uh, they are also huge, like 400, uh, 200 megawatt hours. Big system, even bigger. And UPS racks uh, very often in data center IT industry, where you can see a lot of racks with the batteries. And I'm pretty uh, uh, wondering what will happen if the marine gets into it, because those ships are huge. So I'm really wondering how this will look like. If we talk about the DC flash, for example, in the PV system, and I think I found this uh, graph is very educative. If you look for the connection between inverter and PV uh, panel or PV string or whatever it is there, you might uh, create a few, uh, actually two arcs, uh, arc types. Uh, and, and as a basic, so one is a serious fault uh, arc where you create it on the same phase. So you take the one cable, probably you see it very often on the uh, on the videos when someone is taking cable and on the connector and is creating the arc by connecting, disconnecting the cable. But this is happening on the let's say on the plus or minus uh, on the one phase. You might as well create the arc to the ground. So this will be called parallel fold, or in this case, grounding fold, but generally it is parallel fold. And we can also create the arc between two phases. And in, in practice, it is very hard to <coughs> detect the serious fold, 
but because of the nature of PV system with the very low fault current is also hard to detect parallel fault as well. And you might have a different locations. So you might create it on the panel itself, you might create it on the cable, you might create it on the combiner box. You don't see it here, but there will probably be if there will be multiple of them, there will be combiner box. Uh, you might have it on the inverted DC side and as well on the inverted AC side, which is ACR flash. Um, so far, it is hard to detect the DC part. There is a uh, approach to create some, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, what you know, uh, like IFDD, arc flash detection device. You might have arc RFCE, arc flash current interruption, which is a uh, algorithm actually is internally in inverter that will detect the arcs but it will detect mostly and can switch over the current flow but if you still have an arc like this yeah uh, the PV is the source not the inverter itself so it can stop the flow to the network but if it stops flow then we still have a fault here and I will show you some recording for it there was a lot of a uh, lot there are some fires coming and that was uh, the fire in Argentina in one of the Ulum one or two or three uh, plan when the central inverter was uh, burnt and you can see a few of them it's not much really that they can do they just uh, let's say uh, stop the fire if you look for the YouTube recordings on the on the PV string so this will be PV string cable or PV string com uh, combiner box I don't really see this <laughs> the only thing you can do now is may probably cut the cable um, which is not very uh, safe thing to do unless you know what you are doing and you see it's not really disconnected from anything uh, there are some different topologies uh, for the PV system so that's why we have to take into account every site itself there is no one answer to fit all uh, we also have a battery energy storage systems um, which generally looks like here the, the good thing is um, we, so the energy storage is, is this part it might be a bit more complicated than that, like on this uh, graph again it is very useful because it tells you that it is always working with some inverters and so on or BMS but battery management system but it also again it's very important where we have a fault if we have a fault on the battery itself maybe on the cable to the DC uh, panel if there is a would be a panel maybe there is a uh, on the cable but on the protection side before protection after protection or on the main bus sometimes in inverter there will be a main bus here main bus here uh, you might have a multiple panels multiple racks and they are combined with a few panels uh, again this makes a difference and if this is on the inverted DC side which inverter very often is protected by the fuse internally but you might also have an internal inverter AC site as well. And then we have a different mode of operation. At least for DC, it doesn't really make that big difference. It makes for the AC. So if you operate on switch, on bypass, or the double conversion or conversion mode, AC to AC. From what I found, uh, at least for the recording, there was an accident in uh, OVH data center in Strasbourg uh, recently. I think it was 2021 or 20. When this accident happened um, i haven't seen i read the report it is in french but uh, officially it was a battery fault that leads to fire the cause for it was the increased humidity that was seen by the sensors uh, those are the two pictures from the report uh, you can find it on the website um, for me it looks like yeah it was a fault on the battery uh, why the fault happens is a different story but it creates the arc flash and then because of this it creates the fire and we know that it was a lot of websites were down because of this so I haven't seen actually the arc flash related uh, word in the report but for me that's this what it would look like uh, similar actually story was in the Tesla project in uh, Australia the huge project 300 megawatts 450 megawatt hour where there was a leak from the cooling fluid inside the battery uh, box and it created uh, the short circuit and the arc flash and then caused the fire and uh, those containers they have uh, sprinklers inside but you can see the only thing that what uh, firefighters were able to do to, to contain the fire to one and I think two boxes so two containers 
so it will not spread to everything else and there was a lot of uh, apparently a lot of accidents in uh, South Korea so let me run it for you it was from the 8 uh, channel SBS uh, news I cut it uh, from this just to show you the core so that was recording of the fire from the battery uh, storage system mm. I think it was in uh, I have it written in Gochang Gyeongsang uh, region and apparently they have a lot of fires like this um, so far I found from the report that Korea uh, stepped out a bit from the making a lot of battery storage systems so at least for a moment and I'm not sure how, how how far this will go but we'll see um, the same topic um, just to talk about details so uh, electrical vehicles is it uh, um, bike is it car is it track or maybe marine generally the topology will be similar so you have a battery management system and the batteries uh, how big this is it depends probably on the load that we need what we operate um, again we have a uh, two options so we, we might have a thermal runaway which is internal battery issues for the leon as far as uh, it's recognized now uh, so it might be on the battery and it might be on the dc cable but uh, just to give you maybe an other uh, distinguish, so we talk about the alphas when we work on something, and we also talk about the thermal runaway, which is uh, internal, uh, see, battery as a product problem, which also is might be dangerous for us. We also, and again, we have a normal operation, charging, discharging, and, and it might be damaged. And the damage, I would, uh, I would tell you why we talk about it. So from the recording, this is very one that I use very often. Um, it is a scooter it is charging you keep it in home nothing really special uh, is happening actually this disconnecting it and there was again and this disconnecting probably won't change much it's better to leave it and uh, run away so there was recorded a lot of uh, recently at this in Canada a lot of uh, fires caused by batteries so I'm also looking to investigation very nice report um, from NASA they actually have the similar issue like we see 2016 for one of the um, robot that was I think planned for uh, testing it was filled with the lithium-ion batteries and you might see the uh, reaction and there is one interesting thing on this recording um, amongst others so you can see the fire uh, you probably don't see the voice in the background but uh, what generally he has is a CO2 extinguisher um, so this first attempt he runs out of gas he found the next one try again overview the, the conclusion is that the it is not really um, the best solution to have a CO2 extinguisher for it but they didn't have any water or foam water at that time and there is one thing that I want you to see so it looks like everything is done and we finished no fire is contained no problem and then it takes few seconds and it reignites so generally the batteries as a source they are really really hard to um, let's say contain uh, in this kind of fire mode so we also have to keep in mind that there is a fire risk related with it but also uh, I'm, I will be looking on the Arklash related problems and this is completely new topic if you go to the EV cars uh, this is very uh, new word for the older car mechanics they previously didn't have had issues like this and the video I found was because there was a lot of reported uh, uh, electric vehicle cars battery uh, system was flooded there was a, a hurricane on Florida not so long a time ago and after the everything was gone appears that 
you know, the cars were flooded with the salt water. Salt water caused the corrosion inside the battery cells. And a few days later, uh, because of the corrosion, there was a short circuit or sparking or increased temperature. Um, the car started to, to catch fire. So there was a thermal runaway in the batteries. Uh, and this is just happening as a side effect of the flooding. So that was that's a surprise effect uh, uh, after this uh, hurricane. And also it might overheat it and, and so on. So it is interesting topic, um, to be honest. And uh, as I said, this is completely whole new world of electrical safety for the car mechanics. That previously we have 24, 12, uh, 48 volts DC systems in the car maximum. And uh, now you have a huge battery inside which might hurt you and you have to handle it properly because it might be like 900 volt DC system 600 volt DC system so this is already a shock hazard issue as well so give you an example because that's what I promised um, if you look on the hierarchy of controls from NFPA uh, and I just uh, let's say put into perspective from the battery systems or DC systems so we try to, uh, we, we know, okay, a lot of elimination, we try to eliminate uh, the hazard. It is really hard because uh, you might do the lot on everything, but technically it's very uh, common that probably you work on live systems anyway, because you will need to discharge the battery or uh, go to the PV when it's not operating. So it's very likely that you operate on live systems because you are close to the, so closer to source, the worse is this. Um, in past we have this uh, substance, so we, we might reduce the or replace the hazard. Let's say we can keep system below 50 volts uh, AC and 100 uh, volts DC. Just to uh, m let's say it is uh, safe voltage for us. Uh, it's not anymore in DC because we we go to the systems like 900 volts, 800 volts DC, and so on. So we already have a shock hazard issue uh, from the engineering controls perspective. Uh, what I think might be interesting is, uh, especially for the batteries and cars and racks, you might install uh, uh, barriers. So when you do something and you keep the risk, you might install the arc-rated barriers uh, in between something, which you think it will be um, um, require some extra protection against the arc. So I think this will be good good solution. Uh, from of course training, everything else stays the same, and then we go to the PPE which we have to rate it against the hazard so uh, i got the project when the, the project was of course bigger one of the part one part of inside the factory was a U multiple ups i took the smallest one probably uh, when we have a 400 kv ups i think from vertif doesn't matter really for this we have a three racks of batteries connected via fuses to the main dc bus uh, simple as it looks like here so I model everything in uh, ETAP. Uh, I used uh, Stokes Open Lander for calculation because uh, the max power method gives much higher results, which are, doesn't look uh, reasonable. Um, but the Stoke op Stokes Open Lander gives, in uh, my feeling, the best results so far. <coughs> um, so that, that's the model, <coughs> digital twin model. All the battery racks, they are under the one mode of the model for the batteries, 140 amp hours. The whole system was going up to 353 volts, approx. Of course, it depends on scope of, scope of uh, uh, state of charge. And uh, there was one interesting thing here, uh, which I have to mention, because the system was designed, this is DC system, yeah. The UPS will be on this side here, and uh, we have a cable for the main bus. Uh, three combiner, let's say DC uh, boxes, and the each rack of the battery, and the each fuse box was filled with 450 A AC GG type, uh, which is for 500 volts AC, and we already have over 600, so that's not exactly well. So this is something that was to uh, consider to change. We have to model all the cables here and all the cables between the uh, the box and the battery and the cables to the UPS because it makes a difference on such a small system and the decay delay and, and reaching the peak. Uh, initially I set up the, the calculation for two seconds rule uh, from an FPA just to check what, what the results will be and we end up having everywhere 25 uh, calories per square centimeter. 
and we reach two seconds time. So I see, okay, this is not correct. Something has to be done with the protection because it doesn't work. Uh, so I just run the limit to 60 seconds just to see what will happen. And then you immediately see, okay, on the main bus, it will be 74 calories because we reach some almost six seconds to trip, which is a very long time. Uh, the same will be here because there is no huge difference. And on the each battery, because there was no battery bus, let's say we make the fault on the battery itself. Then we see at 60 seconds, we see something like 230 calories, which is a huge uh, amount because it takes one minute. And the question is why it takes one minute. So if you start the time current course and you can uh, recreate, and I had to recreate AC fuse on the DC just to show you the difference. And the problem was that um, if we can trip um, each battery itself for the external fault, we trip relatively uh, slow time, approx 5.776 or 6 seconds because it uh, gives approx 3000 amps current um, both batteries if they fill the, the third one they will trip relatively fast in 85 milliseconds for the fuse so let's say external supply to the battery will be tripped relatively fast but the battery itself doesn't have any more protection so it will just stay there with the full current until the time that we i said 60 seconds but it probably it can take as long as it as it need until it will burn everything down so I found, okay, let's look for some simple solutions for it. So the first one was to change the fuse type. We didn't change the size, we changed the fuse from the GG to AR for the rapid, fast type. And this already gives huge difference because uh, the tripping time went from almost 6 to 1 second. And nothing will change on the battery itself, but uh, we, we can see the difference on the main bus and the other bus, which is 12 calories instead of uh, was 76. So that's the huge difference already, huge, huge improvements. What else we can do? So the next point was, so that's about the times. Next point was about changing the fuse size to make it smaller. Uh, because I have a doubt if they really need 450 amp uh, fuse. So let's try it, what will happen if we use 350, if this is really worth to consider. And the first point was yes, we find out that uh, if we change the 300, 450 AC GG normal type to 350 a, AR, uh, we already are in two calories level because tripping time for the main bus will be much, much, much lower. Uh, that's purely because of the higher testing of the fuse. Nothing will change on the battery because really nothing is changing here. This will change, this will trip immediately almost, but uh, yeah, this makes the major energy because it will stay for 60 seconds. But, but dropping from 74 to 2.1 is a, is a huge gain already. That's what I was saying. Uh, different characteristics of the fuse, super uh, fast trip time uh, for the six points, for the two batteries together, let's say, fitting the other one. And the battery itself takes approximately 0 0.1, which is good. But then, yeah, okay, okay, we have a steel fault on the battery itself internally, let's call it on the rack. Uh, can we do something different? So now we can look on the topology, how the topology might look like uh, in different way. And you might do something like this. It happens sometimes when there is no common DC bus, but uh, uh, the each UPS block inverter gets itself supplied from the battery. I don't know if this is good for the UPS itself for the overall reliability of the work, but from the protection point of view, if we keep the 350 and do this, then we immediately are below 1.2 calories, so 0 0.5. Because we have a bit smaller uh, current, but again, uh, we are a bit faster to trip. And that's enough to keep the UPS side, DC side, below 1.2 and make it safe for operation. Um, but still, we have the problem with the battery itself. And this is something really hard to solve because you will need the intercell or inter-battery protection to make this much uh, faster because nothing is really here to trip it the only thing you can do you can just wait and or remove the fold which is really hard when it's happening but but we can improve the other part of the system uh, a lot so for this we need something different and um, if you if you ask how to deal with it so far 
uh, for me it's a, it's a big topic because it is happening I, I kind of believe that probably with the thermal runaway problem uh, will not solve it we'll just get rid of it uh, by having the new different type of battery that doesn't have this issue because it's really hard to uh, extinguish it and it's a really fire issue um, for the PV systems as far as I see uh, intercell protection or micro inverters uh, they will at least not eliminate the fault but at least uh, at least eliminate the faulted panel not every installation has it but uh, it is uh, in my feeling very good solution because you can you know eliminate it as close to the uh, uh, faulted panel and just this panel will be lost but yeah, everything else is getting safer uh, for my feeling what on the project that I did um, I saw that uh, if you avoid big distance between the protection and source so if you can move the source very close to your panel when you have a rack of the batteries not uh, drag long cables to the main protection panel connected and every panel to it but just keep the protection on the battery rack itself this at least give you the extra protection for the cable and and keep it shorter and sometimes it's easier to, to trip it in this way um, if we have a, a yeah of course proper battery management system so this is generally uh, instruction probably for every battery manufacturers that uh, yeah you need to use your own OEM system or at least a certified system for this type of battery and again we it looks at the conclusion from it is that uh, we need to have some proper PPE it's not that it's, the DC is no problem it looks at DC it is shock hazard issue and also it is arc clash issue very often so as I said it is very new word for uh, at least for the EV for the car mechanics uh, on the electrical safety protection and that's all for today thank you for joining me and watching this recording uh, we are done for 2022 I'll be back in 2023 with probably some new webinars or at least the Q&A session we'll see uh, if you would like to stay up to date go and visit my website you might uh, uh, also visit my YouTube channel uh, where, where this actually recording is so you should watch it now here and I will try to keep everything posted on LinkedIn so you can find it. And that's all from me for today. Thank you very much for joining. Apologies again that we had the problems with the audio. Uh, I will try to solve it a different way, hopefully soon. And have a nice day. Thank you very much.